Greetings, I'm Bill Jewell with Colorado-based Installation Technology Corporation, Intech. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Force 2 electronics, a little bit about troubleshooting, identifying the different parts, things like that. I've got a Force 2 electrical system here out of a machine that may be pretty typical of the one you have on your Force 2. It has the two switches in the upper right corner here that enable the agitator and the blower control circuits to pull in the contactors. We have the variable speed bypass switch here. It's currently down, which is where the speed control knob will work. In the neutral position, nothing will work. In the up position, it will send full power to the blower motor. This is the twist lock receptacle for your remote cord that you control the machine with. This is your agitator circuit breaker and your two flange receptacles where power comes into the unit. Now let's look at the inside here. Now let's talk about the two circuits that are involved in this machine. There is an agitator circuit and a contactor and a blower circuit and its own contactor and they are entirely separate and must be plugged into two separate dedicated circuits. Uh, let's talk about the agitator a little bit. The power comes in off this receptacle right here for the agitator. One of the hot wires goes through the circuit breaker right here if you think that there is a possibility that uh, the circuit breaker is bad, as in your agitator motor is not running correctly, pull these off, interlock slide the corners of them together for test purposes, don't let them touch anything, turn it on. If your agitator motor runs, you've wired around the circuit breaker. Never run like this, use this only for test purposes. So our power wires are coming into our contactor on the right here. They're coming into 2T1 contact and 4T2. From now on, we're gonna call them T1 and T2, and it's matching output contactors L1 and L2. Now, power's coming into here. Anytime your machine is plugged in and you have power, you should be measuring 120 volts at T1 and T2. With the contactor pushed in, you should be measuring 120 volts on the output at L1 and L2. If you're measuring that power there, there are just wires from there going to your agitator motor. If it's not running, chances are there's something in the airlock that's keeping it from running, at which time you might hear it hum, or if it's doing absolutely nothing at all, the windings in the motor could conceivably be burned out. Now the next circuit is our blower circuit here. It has its own separate receptacle. The power comes in and ends once again at T1, T1 and T2. There are also two small black wires from T1 and T2 that heat up your transformer down here in the bottom. This transformer changes 120 volts AC to 24 volts AC. That's the power that then comes out of the orange wires that are on the transformer here. One of those orange wires eventually ends up going out to your remote on the white wire which is this one right here. See how this connects up to the remote plug? So it changes from orange to white right here. The other orange wire goes over to the contact way down in the corner down in here that is uh, on the very side of the contactor. When you put 24 volts there and then switch the other 24 through your remote, comes back in through these wires, through the switches, it ends up back at this corner. So when you have 24 volts AC at that corner of it and the other corner up here where the wire from the remote ends, if you have 24 volts there and the contactor is not clicking in, then the contactor is probably bad. Right? Now, as far as the, uh, the circuit for the blower, it comes in on a separate circuit through the receptacle here, ends up at T1 and T2 once again, when the contactor is clicked in, like you, I'm pushing it in, you now should have power at L1 and L2 right up here. If you have power there and your blower motor is still not running, come up here to the bottom of your variable speed bypass switch and do a voltage check on the black wire coming in and the white wire coming in. These are the wires coming from your contactor directly. If you have 120 volts at those two, and be very careful doing that voltage check, they're close together, and you don't have 120 coming out of the center and the center right pin, then the switch is bad. 
Let's say that you do, though, have power coming out of the center and the right pin, and that would be 120 volts. Those wires lead directly out to your blower motor. So if you have power at those center pins and the blower motor is not running, chances are the blower motor is bad. Um, now, a uh, function of the fuse holder in the machine. One of the wires from the contactor goes, the single wire goes into the fuse holder, and it comes out on two wires. One of them goes to the bottom corner right here uh, of, of the variable speed bypass, and then the other wire goes to your speed control unit. Then the wires from the speed control end up coming into the top two wires up here when you have the switch selected to run the speed control. Now, if the power comes in there, the switch has to be all the way down. That then lets the power go out our common wires again and out to our blower motor. If your speed control unit is not working, if the dial is not working, and you're sure that your switch was in the right position, then chances are either the potentiometer is bad, which is rare, or the speed control board in the back here is burnt out, which is probably the most common issue issue as far as speed controls not working. Now, let's talk a little bit more here about how the remote actually works. The remote out on the end of the cord actually just connects together this white wire that's going out there with the black wire right here to turn the blower on. It connects the white wire with the red wire out on the remote to turn on your agitator. So to test internally to see if this system is working, get yourself a jumper wire and jump from the black to the white. If the blower turns on, then you know that the problem was from the cord out if the remote wasn't working. If the remote's not turning on the agitator, if you jump from the white to the red wire, which is what the switch does on the remote, if it works here but it doesn't work with the remote, then there's a problem somewhere in the cord out. Now, troubleshooting on remote cords themselves. Um, remote cords can be ohms checked out with your meter. Uh, set your meter over to ohms. Always put your plugs in the correct position here to measure ohms. Put your two uh, leads together here to make sure that they zero out. Once they do, you can use this now to check the continuity of wires going out to your remote cord. Frequently, you'll have breaks in those wires, and they'll usually happen right at the remote cord or right where they go into the machine, which is where the wires flex the most. So if you're having a problem with continuity, check those areas. Now, that's about all I think we can put on YouTube here. I've just rattled on like mad. So uh, if you have any questions about your system or anything, give us a call here at Intech, 800-666-1611. And the code is Intech2015.